Congo alone. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's just bogus. And I think we have to really struggle around these questions and defining you know, what, how we you know, make these critiques and understanding what we have to do. Uh, and I think this is a really important discussion as well. I think this whole discussion is important and how we've begun to entertain the question of electoral politics is right on time. Brother yeah. Charles. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, expand on what Glenn said about what I haven't figured out myself yeah. is how do you change the structures through electoral politics. You can deliver some goods and services to your people and you can be uh -huh. a voice, but how do you change the structures? Because what happened, and he mentioned a good one, this is a more local one, but the school boards, the power of the school boards, which really allocates money. Do you know in New York City and New York State, there are about 63 counties, and all of the counties upstate and the white areas, majority, have school boards except for New York City. <laughs> New York City is the only county in all of New York State that doesn't have some school boards. They eliminated the school boards and it was the black Democrats in the New York State Assembly that gave Mayor Bloomberg mayoral control over the school system. And now, and now, um, the Blasio is saying, well, since you gave it to the Republican, man, I want it too. Like it has to do with a party and yeah, not with you know, yeah. a system of structure. So one of the things that we've been arguing up in the state is to end mayoral control. I've gotten this far with that because I do want to change the structure. They said, well, Charles, you know, the uh, school boards were corrupt. And I said, well, then let's end the New York State Assembly because the speaker of the State Assembly got busted. Yeah for corruption, and then let's end the state senate because the president, Joe Bruno, of the state senate was arrested for corruption. So if we're gonna end structures based upon corruption, then you'd have to wipe out the state assembly and the state senate. It had nothing to do with corruption. Of course there were bad school boards. There are bad school boards in upstate and white communities, but they don't end the system, the structure of school boards because you have a few bad apples. So one of the biggest battles, I did succeed. They wanted to give him seven years of mayoral control. And I argued and argued and said, you know, what we need to do, I know you're all going to renew it, but not seven years. I say it shouldn't happen at all. We should immediately put in a commission to develop a new school governance structure for New York City. So even if you're giving them this one year and put the commission in place, so we can come up with a new structure, because maybe school boards is included in it with something else. And you know what they did? They gave him another year without my commission. <laughs> so now the Senate, and for different reasons, don't want it to have him, because they're Republicans. That's why I put it out there, because I knew they wouldn't mm -hmm. vote for it. Mm -hmm. And so we've been having mayoral control for one more year. This year, they said they committed to change in the structure, but that's the challenge of the electoral arena. How this do we is, change the structure? This is what I want to address. Right, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Quick. Go ahead. Is that, question, is that problem has anything to do with the fact that a teacher's union was one white and they wanted to black? No, in terms of changing the school board? Yeah. No, that was a battle in Ocean Hill Brownsville with the oh, teachers' yeah. Yeah. union. Yeah. yeah. Right, the union battle was Ocean Hill Brownsville, and that was about community control of our schools. Yeah. Schools, they did a slick thing. They went from instead of giving us community control over our schools, they gave us decentralization into these school boards. Right. Yeah. And decentralization is different from community control. You can decentralize a system and still not have control over it. Yeah. So it was about really battling like we want to control the police, we want to control the school system, we want to control the healthcare delivery system in our community, and especially the economy and the land and the businesses, and that's what self-determination is all about. Let me tell you my response to this question about the structures. First of all, the structures are designed to protect the system. Period. Uh, what we can do is build mass movements that create stresses and things like that in the structures and in the systems. And what we can do is build mass uh, movements that can 
create uh, economic crises and things like that for them so that the structures don't function the way they want to. What we can do is we can raise up questions like black community control of police and, and stick it to them and struggle around them and begin to even force where we can uh, this kind of, of change within the structure, but that's not overturning the structure. And what we can do is be a part of a revolutionary party that has as its objective to overturn the entire social system and that uses the electoral process as a stepping stone to get there because so many people are stuck and trapped in the electoral process and they control our ability to get to our people. But in this election, we can start getting to our people and begin to put things on the agenda to win more and more people into activity and into a revolutionary process that will overthrow the system. My, the aim, I can only speak, this is not the coalition talking. But that's what we're about, and that's why we create various other institutions so that people can begin to learn how to govern. Because if you're not talking about governing, you ain't talking about nothing. That's why you see radio stations, you see furniture stores, you see all these other institutions that we create because we plan to govern. That's the objective, to be self-governing people. We plan to govern because we reject the notion that anybody, anybody should govern African people except African people. We are, we are jealous of the power of government. We want it for ourselves. And we will form alliances and relationships with anybody in the world that if it contributes to our becoming a self-governing people, that's the objective. So everything that we do, we run candidates, we're not thinking that running a candidate and winning an election here. But what it will do, it will mobilize people and bring them to these political questions. It, it ups the ante. It raises the political ante. And this is what, part of what we do. And when people can get this high, they can see further than what they could see before. And we say with political power. Yes, yes. And the political power has to bring it down, bring it all down, so that black people can have absolute freedom. And yes. you can't talk about freedom unless you're really talking about the ability to govern. And how are you going to govern if you don't have the instrument through which you do that? And that's the work that we do on a permanent basis. And part of our strategy would do with getting, doing the electoral process. So that's, that's our response to the question. You ain't going to do it. You ain't going to do it through their system. But what we can do is inflame the consciousness of African people and drive them to revolutionary organization with the objective of overturning the entire rotten, foul social system. That's how we see it. You know. So, that's, that's how we see it. You want to know, that's why we do everything that we see, everything we do, the pies that we cook and sell, the furniture stores that we open, the gym on the corner, the institutionalizing of our presence and everything, everything we do of the African People's Socialist Party, running somebody for office, uh, putting measures on the ballot. We put incredible measures on the ballot that change the whole question of of land control in Oakland, California, raised a hell of a campaign so serious that a local newspaper who, Duke Majin was the governor of California at the time, a local newspaper said that if this measure wins on Monday, Duke Majin, Major, the governor, would order an airstrike on Oakland on Tuesday. That's how serious it was, you understand? And, and so that's the way we push it to its limits. And we get mad, bring the mass of the people, because the people want every damn thing. The people don't want just a little bit of something. They want every damn thing. And we have to open the door in the process for the people to take everything that they need. Yes. That's our position on the question anyway. I'm, no, I'm, I've over-talked it. Yes. I do that from time to time. <laughs> uh, um, but I'm um, also, I will let uh, Comrade Ikenge, you, you come in. You can do the pitch. I've, I've ruined my reputation if I got to do all this and do the pitch, too. <laughs> okay. And then uh, after this, we'll take a, is there a break? Yes. Yeah. We are going to take a break, and then we're going to have uh, uh, come at Brother Earl O'Neill to come and mesmerize us yes. uh, <laughs> uh, with his genius. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Ikenge, please. Uhuru, I just wanted to remind everyone that in your packet, you have your donor card. I'm asking everyone uh, to make sure that you reach in your packet, fill it out, and make your contribution. We raised, uh, have raised some money, but we need some more. And I would like to close this day out on a high note, so I'm asking everybody to, to please 
We're trying to raise five hundred dollars. Okay, and where are we in relationship to that? A little short. <laughs> well, I'll add a hundred. All right. <laughs> people watching uh, go to black is back agenda uh, black of black coalition dot org black is back coalition dot org go to the donation donate button and do it in that fashion I'm sorry that I took ate up uh, so much of uh, <coughs> Glenn's time in terms of the discussion but there's going to be panel discussions I think one today and I think at least one tomorrow uh, I wanted to express, I thought that, uh, I think that what we've heard up to now has just been incredibly powerful, significant presentations. And I think that uh, uh, the presentation that Glenn gave in terms of the whole history of our relationship uh, to the electoral process uh, offers a major contribution to this, this entire struggle. I think that we are producing uh, right now uh, in the form of uh, of uh, the videos and, and things like this, uh, something that we can use uh, to take this uh, school uh, to various other places where African people are located, and uh, also as a template uh, to uh, reproduce the school uh, uh, in other places as well. And, uh, but I'm gonna uh, go ahead now, and uh, uh, I'm gonna see if we can take a break, and when it can get, when we come back, uh, uh, before this is over, Kinge will say something about how much money uh, has been uh, collected here. Um, so uh, it is now 6 o'clock, effectively. So uh, we are behind uh, about 15 minutes. And let's take a 15-minute break and then uh, come back. And uh, the health nuts can run around the block a couple of times and get some oxygen in your lungs. And um, let's take 15 minutes so that we can uh, be, you know, at least a bit fresher uh, to hear uh, from Brother Earl O'Neill uh, when he makes his presentation. Uhuru. Sister Mary, she came running.